pen barn so pen barns are structures for sheltering and restricting dairy animals on all dairy farms there should be additional accommodation for calving calf rearing and housing sick animals pen barns or isolation boxes are suitable for this purpose they are either be from the main barn or they form a part of it sometimes a separate pen is provided for each bull the size of the pen varies from 11 to 17 square meter for different needs either a square pen or a rectangular one have a minimum width of 3 meter that should be used so now a question comes that why a pen barn is required already uh, we know that there are different type of uh, barns are there like stanchion barn open barn so all these different type of dairy units or dairy barns are used or constructed depending on the need depending on the location depending on the amount that has to be invested each different type of barns have their own advantage as well as their own disadvantages as for <coughs> stanchion barn pen barn is not much needed but for case of open barn pen barn is highly required reason is in open, in stanchion barn animals are tied at one place into their own individual stall they get their feed and everything there itself i mean to say they don't have to move from one place to another place but for the case of open barn animals are free to move in entire barn and in that case there are chances that if a single animal is infected by some disease there is a 100% chance that that disease will spread to within the entire herd that is the reason it is always suggested that in case of open barn there should be space for pen barn so what will be the advantage of this pen barns advantage will be there will be less chances of spreading of any kind of disease so it will be a major step to related to preventing the spread of disease so now here we have seen that pen barn are structures for sheltering and restricting dairy animals and all dairy farm there should be additional accommodation for calving calf rearing and the most important is housing sick animals separately then only such kind of disease can be minimized to be spread between the herd so it is an isolation box we can call it as an isolation box and they are away from the main barn sometimes separate pen is also provided for each bull and the size of the pen varies from 11 to 17 square meter for different purposes different need thus we see that it is a very important component 
of a dairy unit which has to be compulsorily it has to be made in any farm so that is why it is important to be constructed within each and every farm either it is an stanchion one or uh, open shed barn so next one is poultry housing so the object of poultry housing is to keep the fowls comfortable so as to promote health get maximum production and converse feed and the energy generated by the birds a proper poultry house design must also aim at removing the excess moisture the birds breathe out from their lungs so uh, it is well known that if a poultry house is not properly ventilated there is maximum chances of getting various disease and if disease attracts a single bird there is much probability that many more number of birds will be infected through one bird so to avoid such kind of situations proper ventilation is required types of poultry houses depending on the material used for the construction of the floors the poultry houses can be broadly classified in three different classifications first one is wire floored poultry house second is deep litter poultry house third one is cage houses so wire floored poultry house deep litter poultry house and cage houses so we will discuss the first one that is wired floored poultry houses so these houses make use of 12 to 14 gauge expanded metal or welded wire mesh for making their floors the floor is placed about 45 cm above the ground level having a rising slope of 15% series of nests are placed all along the post throughout the entire length of the house the floor of the nest may be of either wooden or hard cloth with 12 to 15 percent slope towards the central service alley of the house at the lowest end of the floor there is 3 cm high stopper to collect the eggs feed and water troughs are suitably located to facilitate the work the roof is covered with a galvanized iron sheet about 20% slope in roof is good enough and it is best to have an overhang of about 1 meter on all sides of a 5.5 meter wide house the overall dimensions of a 400 boards may be 23 into 5.5 meters having a service alley of 1.8 meter width in the middle of the house the entire housing is enclosed by means of hexagonal wire netting of 1.25 cm mesh made of 20 gauge strands so this can be an uh, wire floored poultry house this can be a diagram of wire floored poultry house so starting from the bottom from this end to this end the length is 5.49 the first section is divided in 
is divided in three part first side second side and the middle one so each side is having 1.83 that is for cage and for laying eggs feeding mechanism etc the open space is 1.83 meter this height is being given 2.3 meters and here are the blocks or cages of the boards the top is from the top it is covered by metallic sheet and a little bit of plyboard is kept like this in order to avoid excess water coming of excess water inside the housing during extreme rains so the first one is water trough roast nest with sloping floor feed through expanded metal floor with 15% slope this one is the expanded metal slope floor with 15% of slope roof with 20% slope or then floor and the last one is egg retainer so this one is the egg retainer so second one is deep litter poultry house so it aims at keeping poultry inside the shed all the time the boards live on the floor which is covered with a suitable litter of about 15 to 20 centimeter depth litter material usually consists of chopped paddy straw rice husk or dry leaves materials like wheat or barley straw dry grass or dry stalk of maize and bajra also make good litter this arrangement saves labor involvement in frequent cleaning of the floor it needs only periodic attention like stirring up the litter usually the entire litter get well decomposed by in a one year and is removed and used as a good manure so provision should be made for plenty of ventilation as i said earlier that ventilation is the most important part of uh, housing of poultry housing therefore provision should be made for plenty of ventilation but at the same time protection against sun and rains by providing an overhanging roof on all the side of the house is very essential so as we can see from the picture overhanging of the roof at each side of the building or the unit is required a floor area of 0.36 square meter per bird is usually provided thus the 2.4 into 2.4 meter small shed can accommodate about 16 birds the litter can be kept dry by keeping the right number of birds by raising the floor level higher than its surroundings by not allowing the rain water to enter through roof of side walls this housing offers an excellent opportunity for the birds to burrow in it when the air temperature is high and thereby cool themselves similarly they can warm themselves in the cold weather birds often keep busy in scratching and searching in the litter and hence refrain from feather picking so this can be the diagram of deep litter poultry house and this arrangement can be used for capacity of 500 birds so for each section you can see it is divided in 1.8 meter 18 meter by sorry 1.8 meter by 2.4 meter and this one is 75 centimeter thick 40 centimeter high walls are provided for separation this entire length is 6 meters
so cage house so cage house are generally built in warm regions where birds need no protection from the cold so these type of houses are not commonly used in the warm regions uh, sorry cold regions this can these are generally built in warm regions where birds do not require any protection from cold winds so the cages are built in continuous rows and maybe one to four rows of these cages in a house depending upon its width cages are made of welded steel wires and are provided with a sloping floor and egg retainer from where the eggs can be collected so it is very important cages are made of welded steel wire and are provided with a sloping floor and egg retainer from where the eggs can be collected so cages may be made either to house one or two birds at a time the dimensions of a cage to a house one bird may be 0.6 into 0.2 into 0.45 meter the feeding and watering troughs are placed outside the cage so that the operator can easily supply the material droppings are allowed to fall on the earth or concrete floor the cages are placed at a height between 75 and 90 centimeters from the floor so important points are to be considered here that the dimension of a cage to house one board may be 0.6 into 0.2 into 0.45 meter so this length is 0.6 breadth is 0.2 and the height should be 0.45 meter so this dimension of the cage is sufficient for the survival of an adult bird next is the feeding and watering troughs are placed outside the case so that the operator can easily supply the material two advantages are there of keeping this uh, feeding and watering trough out of the cage if we, if we keep it inside the cage the boards are going to sometimes some boards may uh, stand upon it and the trough may fall down and the feeding material as, as well as water will be wasted secondly if we keep it inside for the operator or for the user it will be difficult for supplying the feeding material and the water so droppings are allowed to fall on the earth or concrete floor and the cages are placed at a height between 75 and 90 centimeter from the floor so this can be a cage type poultry house this can be a diagram of cage type poultry house you can see this is cage number one two three four and five so feed trough this one is feed trough egg retainer is this one third one is water trough fourth one is wire gauge and the fifth one is hanger sixth is the roof and seven is the cage support so uh, by this designing we can simply understand by this diagram how a cage type poultry house looks like next one is grain storage so grain is generally stored either in bags or in bulk a combined system of bag come bulk storage is also practiced in some part of the country in villages the bulk storage system is more common than the storage in bags which is considered to be a practical method of storing grain in the government godowns as well as in trades so uh, uh, talking about the uh, poultry unit uh, several studies like most important fao has um, predicted some data uh, regarding per capita consumption of uh, cereal crops root and tuber crops meat and milk and uh, poultry products so in that study we can see that fao has estimated nearly estimated that egg consumption of egg is increasing day by day 
starting from year 1990 until now. So a tremendous growth in egg consumption has been increased in last several years and in coming years definitely it is going to be increased due to several reasons. Second on the second number of growth is for meat product or consumption of meat products. So this uh, poultry production or poultry unit can be a beneficial unit for the farmers for agri entrepreneurs in terms of economic beneficial. So coming back to the point that is grain storage that is generally grains are stored in bags or in bulk. A combined system of bag and bulk storage is also practiced in some part of the country. Then in villages the bulk storage system is more common than the storage in bags which is considered to be a practical method of storing grain in the government godowns as well as in trade. There are three uh, main type of storage structures for the purpose of grain storage. First one is traditional storage structure. Second is improved storage structure. Third one is modern storage structure. And last one is farm silos. So talking about traditional storage structures, these type of storage structures have generally capacities between 1 to 50 tons. The storage of grain is generally done in one of the following storage structures in the different rural and urban regions of India in bulk as well as in bag storage. There are different type of traditional storage structures. First one is Morai type storage structure. Second is Bukhari type storage structure. Third is Kotar type storage structure, mud koti type storage structure, munta type storage structure, kanaj type storage structure, kutla type storage structure, metal sheet bin type storage structure, bag type storage structures. So these are the different type of traditional storage structures which are still practiced in our country at several places. So this is the image of Murai type storage structure. Uh, paddy image and sorghum can be uh, stored and capacity is 3.5 to 18 tons. And talking about shape, it is inverted truncated cone. So by the, this diagram, we can understand that how a Murai type storage structure looks like. So starting from the top, this is mud plaster. That is 1.35 centimeter thickness. This is rope. This one is bamboo splits. And this is the timber flooring. So this is joint. This is a flat proofing cone. And galvanized steel cylinder. This one is galvanized steel, steel cylinder. So by this arrangement, we can make a Morai type storage structure. Next one is Bukhari type storage structure. So Bukhari type, we can see from the image how it looks like. It is cylindrical in shape, made up of mud or combi combination of mud and split bamboo. Raised above the ground by wooden or masonry platform, floor walls, roof, improved type, same structure, rat proofing cones, then grains, wheat, gram paddy maize and sorghum can be stored and capacity is 3.5 to 18 tons next is quarter type structure storage structure so we can store paddy maize sorghum wheat capacity wheat and capacity is varies from 9 to 35 tons it is in box type of structure when we talk about improved quota type, it is 5 cm thick wooden plank and beams and no gap is given between the planks. Next one is bag type storage structure. So storage capacity is from 25 tons. Generally the length is about twice the width or greater. The entire structure should be moisture proof. 
large size doors of 2.4 into 2.4 meter and top ventilators each door is provided with a light overhanging hood it should be provided with ventilators having wire netting and shutter talking about improved storage structure the improved storage structures are the storage structures for storage of food grains in this type of storage structures there are some improvements made in traditional storage structures this type of storage structures having a higher storage capacity and long term storage of food grains than traditional storage structures improved type of storage structures having capacities is generally 1.5 to 150 tons the storage of grain is generally done in one of the following storage structures in the different rural and urban regions of india in bulk bag as well as bag and bulk storage both options are practiced so next is pusa bin so pusa bin is like other traditional storage structures made up of mud to make the storage structure moisture proof a plastic film is used in all the inner sides of the bin brick and cement bin these type of storage structures are very strong and effect of season on this is very minimum bunker storage are those type of storage structure which are used for long term storage and a larger volume of grains can be stored in bunker type of storage cap storage structure the word cap is used for cover and plinth plinth from the bottom and cover from the top this type of open storage is considered as transit storage and serves the purpose of storage of food grains in bags for very short period so this type of structure are called cap storage structure here are the images for modern storage structures the modern storage structures should be selected on the basis of first on quality and then on cost considerations there are following type of modern storage structures so the two images which we see is this one is called as tower silos and this one is horizontal silos so these two uh, storage structures are the modern storage structures which are practiced nowadays very commonly used so silo type of storage structures silo or bins are classified into two groups depending upon the relative dimensions of the container these are classified as deep bins and shallow bins so shallow bins squat silos come under shallow bins squat silo can compete with sheds for low cost quality storage deep bins bins vertical silos comes under this type of storage structure these are two type of vertical silos flat bottom vertical silo and hopper bottom vertical silos generally a uh, horizontal sheds have been used to provide low cost large volume storage for storing grains and other products a very large volume sheds have also been constructed by central warehousing corporation so these are the images of storage structures so this is the cut section this one is the tower storage or tower silos with hopper here this side there is opening to release or to drain out the grain which is inside and this one is flat bottom tower silos or vertical silos this image is for uh, government go down for storage of grains 
these type of structures are very commonly seen in uh, near railway stations or FCI go downs. So farm silos. Farm silos is a farm structure used to store and protect the animal fodder so that it is preserved in an ideal condition for farm animals. Animal fodder is cut and packed in the air tight silo to allow a partial fermentation to occur. The storage fodder is known as silage. The storage fodder is known as silage. Two type of farm silos are there, tower silos and horizontal silos. Tower silos. Cylindrical shape and made of machinery, wood and metal. Cost of construction is comparatively much higher than that of the horizontal type. Loading of animal fodder is very difficult. Mechanical loader or a larger capacity of blower is required. Then this type of storage structures are not recommended under Indian conditions. So generally in Indian scenario, we see horizontal silos. In horizontal silos, pit type, bunker type or trench or stake type of storage structures are used for storing storage of animal fodder. There are surface as well as below ground type of storage structures used on most of the dairy farms as temporary and permanent storage structures for silage. The spoilage of silage and dry matter losses of these silos ranges between 20 to 30 percent. So while designing of horizontal silos, we must consider the wastage of 20 to 30 percent and then only we should go for further calculation. Pit silos. Permanent pit silo is a circular deep well like a structure which is lined all around the side and sealed from bottom so that water may not rise into it. Made in those type of areas where the soil is deep and the water table is very very low. Otherwise there is chances of getting seepage. Once there is occurrence, occurrence of seepage, our food grains or further items are going to be wasted. So these are made of bricks, stones or concrete and either cement or lime can be used as a binding material. A total 22.5 cm thick wall will be used, satisfactory up to 15 meter depth. The entire surface which is coming in contact with the silage should be plastered to make it smooth, airtight and watertight. Simple roof is made over the silo to protect the silage from sun and excess rain. Corrugated metal sheet, dome or half pitch roof with ample overhanging on all the sides are most economical and provide more space for filling. Stairs may be built along with wall for removing silage from the silo. The diameter of a silo is usually limited to 6 meter and its depth is kept 2 to 3 times that of diameter. When the silo is opened for removing the silage, nobody should enter till the gases are removed. Trench silos. Online trench silos can be made easily without involving any investment on building materials such as brick, cement and sand. Online silos give more spoilage and are likely to have caved side walls due to excessive rain and tend to become muddy at the bottom. So line trench silos are therefore very popular. The walls of the trench silos can be lined with 
brick, concrete or cement, plaster with reinforcing wire mesh. If possible, the silo should be roofed. Drain should drains be made around trench to intercept surface water. So these are the images of trench or silo bags and these two are the images of trench. So we can see that each side there is an wall, concrete wall is being provided. Uh, between this passage the fodder materials are fed and covered for some time. After some times we can start removing from here from these trenches and we could we can start feeding our animals so to facilitate drainage it is desirable to locate the trench silo on sloping ground capacity is depends on the size of hot and number of the day the silage is fed in a year it is always economical to construct only one trench silo even if it is quite larger If we maintain the proper storage techniques, proper manage, we minimize the water leakage and all. In that case, the quality of silage and the nutritive value of silage increases. And the animals who are fed with a good quality of silage, it has been observed that their milk capacity, lactating period, as well as their body weight is increased compared to the dry feed. So silage is more nutritive than dry stalks, but when compared to green fodder, there is some loss of nutritive value in silage too, because the sugar is converted into lactic acid, giving a sour taste. Losses may also occur due to surface spoilage fermentation as well as seepage. So loading of tower silos is difficult. There are different types of silos, horizontal silos, tower silos and pit silos. So tower silos are constructed above the ground. Horizontal silos are also constructed above the ground horizontally. Main problem comes when we construct or when we talk about pit silos which is under the ground so we see that silage is very nutritive but still there are some limitations when compared to green fodder there is some loss of nutritive value so loss may occur due to surface spoilage fermentation and seepage loading of tower silos is difficult why it is difficult because it is in the form of towers and the feeding mouth is on the top so we have to lift up all the feeding materials or further items onto the top of the tower silo then only we can feed it or nowadays there are several suction machines or suction pumps we have to use that all pumps to uh, for storage purpose So loading of tower silos is very difficult compared to other type of silos like uh, pit silos, horizontal silos. So it needs a mechanical loader or a large capacity blower for elevating the chop. So the wall should be smooth, circular and strong enough to avoid cracking due to lateral pressure. Hence a heavy reinforcement is also required by uh, construction of tower silos or any type of silos. The only advantage is if the water table is very close to the ground level, tower silos are preferred. So if ground level, if water table is very close to the ground level, in that scenario, tower silos are preferred. Otherwise, we go for pit silos. 
So the cost of construction of these silos is comparatively much higher than that of horizontal type as well as pit silos. So here we can see some of the images of different type of storage structures which are used in India as well as abroad. So the first image is image of first and this down second. These two images are of trench or trench silos. So these are on the ground surface, above the ground surface and um, the size is not limited. It is up to the choice of the user or the owner and in this, this uh, method we store the feeding items and we can daily remove and feed the animals. Second one, this green color are example of tower size. So this one is a very small unit and this kind of units are for storing large quantity of grain for the crops. So let me move on next slide. We we'll see some modern as well as traditional order storage techniques. So these two are the traditional order storage techniques. Even today in rural India, people use this type of structures because for making uh, this type of structures, machinery is required, whereas mechanization is very low, the standard is very low, the level of mechanization in Indian farms are very, very low. Additionally, for this type of arrangement, extra monetary input will be there. So, due to several reasons, still in the rural part of India, this type of activities are not ongoing. Still, we use the traditional method of storage of grains of water. So, next one is horizontal silos. So horizontal surface silos are used for storing silage. These silos are readily and cheaper made at any time. They can be easily filled and unloaded without any equipment. They are successfully successful in areas having a deep water table. The drying matter losses ranging from 20 to 30 percent while filling either trench and pit sand. Chopped silos should be spread level and flat. They are filled till the silage reaches about ground level and they should be covered with dry paddy straw or plastic cover in order to minimize water leakage, especially during the rainy season. So, so we can see that horizontal silos are very useful, readily available and cheaper compared to other different types of silos. But still there are some limitations like this type of silos can only be preferred or can only be constructed in those areas where water table is very big. Otherwise, there is going to be chances of corrosion as well as uh, loss of the water or dry matter loss. And that dry matter is limited to 20 to 30 percent. So next one is pit silos. So it is a circular deep well-like structure which is lined all along the side and bottom to prevent the water entering into they can be made of bricks or stones or concrete with either lime or cement but up to a depth of 15 meter to 22 meter. So the depth is limited. It should be uh, very between 15 to 22.5 meters, not more than that. So wall should be provided with plastering the entire inner surface and a simple roof over the silo can provide to protect the silage from direct falling of sun as well as rain. So generally a cow is fed 
about 1.4 kg of silage per 45 kg of a body weight body so accordingly for uh, say like for 100 cows and weight is uh, say like uh, 80 or uh, about 80 kg of body weight so they can be fed 3 kg per day so diameter of the silo is determined by quantity of silage fed daily and that quantity of the silos depends on the number of animals so the rate removal should be at the rate of 10 cm per day not more than that the diameter is limited to 6 meter and its depth is kept to 3 times of the diameter not more than that so talking about design criteria, rate of removal is 10 cm per day, silage fed per day is 3 kg per 100 kg of body weight, maximum diameter is 6 meter. Depth is 2 to 3 times diameter, so it can be up to 18 meters. And it is assumed that 1 cubic meter of silage equals 650 kg. So now there is a problem design and economical diameter and the of pit silo to store sufficient quantity of silo silage for a herd of 380 cows having an average body weight of 450 kg each the cows are required to be fed with silage for 200 days per year and also find the required number of pit silos to be constructed so that is given in the question itself Number of cows 300, body weight 450 kg, and number of days per year which with, which has to be fed that is 200 days per year. So solution is um, one cubic meter of silage is 650 kg. Rate of silage removal is 10 centimeter per day. Let each cow feed 3 kg of silage per 100 kg of body. So 3 by 100 into 450, it will be 13.5 kg per day for single cow. Then weight of the silage required for 300 cows is 13.5 into 300. That equals 4050 kg per day. So volume of pit for a daily withdrawal depth of 10 cm, we can use the formula of uh, calculating area of the circle when diameter is known so after equating equation number one and two we get p equals 9.756 that means it is approximate 10 meter so now the depth of silo is daily depth into number of days that is 0 0.1 into 200 so it becomes 20 meter allowing 20 percent of loss actual volume of silage is 20 plus 4 equals 24 as the diameter of pit silos is limited to 6 meter and depth is limited to 18 meter, not more than that. Therefore, two silo pits are required to be constructed. So, next are trench silos. So, I have shown in the image how a trench silo looks like. So, trench silo is this one as well as this one. We make canal like a structure on the ground surface and in between we can store the feeding items. So trench silos can be either lined or lined one or unlined one. Unlined silo is easy to construct but give more spoilage of silage and carrying in of sites during the rain. A lined trench silo is advantageous and the lining can be made with brick, concrete or cement plaster with reinforcing wire, wire mesh. Then filling, packing and sealing are similar to pit silos. The drainage water should not be allowed to collect near the trench and so drains should be made around the trench. The cross-section depends on number of animals to be fed and the length of length is determined by the number of days the silage is fed in a year. 
So next, there is a problem on trench silos. So design a trench silo for a small farm having 140 million weight, 680 kg, and it has to be fed at the rate of 4 kg per 100 kg of its weight. The silo is fed 160 days in a year. So data is already given number of animals, 140 weight of each animal, 680 kg, then feeding rate 4 km. So feeding rate is 4 kg per 100 kg of body weight, number of days which is required to be fed is 160. So let's assume few things like let the depth of silo be 2.5 meter. Length of feed per day be 15 centimeters, size slope is 1 is to 2. So weight of the silage required per day that is feeding rate into weight of animals into number of animals as well into number of animals. So it is uh, 4 by 100 into 680 into 40, 140. So it equals 3808 kg per day. Next is volume of silage required per day. So we can calculate the volume that is required per day. Next is volume of silage stored per day. So this is the formula for calculating volume of silage. So now by equating equation number one and two by the same formula, we get bottom width of 14.37, top width of W plus D that is equal to 16.87 meter and length of the silo, silo given per year with 20% loss of length. So result will be top width silo 16.8 centimeter meter bottom width of silo 14.37, length of silos 24, length of silos, depth of silos 28 meters.